This is a presentation of the AB3BO amateur radio station and a display repair on an ICOM IC207H. We actually have three of these radios in the AB3BO amateur radio station. One is normally used in a mobile, one is used in an RV camper, and then there's one used in a shack. And one of those units had a bad display control module. So we're going to take a look and repair the display control module. This is what the display looks like on the defective radio. You can see the display, you can see the frequency that it's operating at, but it's very hard to see. It looks like there's hardly any backlighting at all. In the setup of the radio there's three or four levels of backlighting, but the uh, selection on this particular radio didn't seem to make any difference. The display stayed at the same level. This is what the repair project looked like from the beginning. I went to Bainesville Electronics and picked up six bulbs. They're 12 volt 60 milliamp lamps. The display only uses two bulbs but I picked up a few spares and then I also picked up some solder wick. The display itself is held together by five screws and when I say display I'm talking about the whole control module. There's a circuit board there's the backing to the control module, there's the front housing to the control module, there's two push buttons, there's three knobs, there's a yellow lens, there's a white plastic display, there's a rubber uh, backing to the push buttons, and then there's a metal clip that spaces out the circuit board and holds the circuit board in place. In normal operations, that white uh, display module that's in the bottom right hand corner sits on top of the circuit board that you see in the picture here. In order to separate the white display from the circuit board we actually had to pry the white display off the circuit board and it actually broke the leads to the bulb. You can see the bulb is actually melted into the white display in the hole on the left hand side and so we had to actually break the leads on the bulb and pull it off of the circuit board, pull the white module off the circuit board. Here's an image of the circuit board with the empty hole on the left hand side where the left bulb went and then there's the defective bulb still in the circuit board on the right hand side. This is an image of the bulb desoldered from the circuit board, the defective one that was originally in the board and the new bulb that's going to go in its place. This old bulb that was pulled off the board appears to be a little bit bigger than the bulb that's going to go into the board. I have a funny feeling that the two bulbs that were on the board were 100 milliamp or higher uh, current draw bulbs compared to the, the new one that's going to go into it. And perhaps those bulbs that were on the board were not the original ones that were put into the radio when it was new. This radio was purchased used off of eBay. So the lower bulb there, the smaller bulb, is what's going to actually be soldered uh, to the uh, circuit board, to the two holes in the circuit board. This is a little bit dark, but here's the circuit board with the two new bulbs soldered in place and the plastic display. You can see on the left side of the plastic display the bulb has been removed. That display area there is cracked, but we're going to use it as it is. This is the first stage of the reassembly of the control module. In the front of the control module, the front case of the control module, you can see the yellow filter is in place. There's a push button on the right hand side of the yellow filter and there's another push button on the left hand side of the yellow filter and then there's the rubber matting that backs up the uh, selection buttons uh, on the front control module. You can see on the circuit board the white display piece has been placed on top of the circuit board. So this is the first stage of the assembly. Here is the second stage of the reassembly process. The circuit board is in place in the front control module. The spring clip is in the bottom portion of this image, uh, just to the bottom of the circuit board. 
that spring clip and spacer is in place there. The next step is going to be three of the screws that are on that page there are going to hold the circuit board into the front control module and then that back plate or back part of the control module is going to be screwed down into the uh, assembly with two screws and then the three knobs are going to go on the front of the display. This is the control module reassembled. All the parts are back together again. Here's the display module or control module mounted on the front of the radio in an operational order. This looks a lot better than it did in the beginning when it was defective. It's actually brighter. You can actually see the display a lot easier. One of the factors that uh, I see here is that the actual backlighting is actually brighter on the right side of the display than it is on the left side. And I think one of the issues is that that white display plastic uh, module that's inside the radio, where the bulb melted into the plastic display, that side of the plastic display is discolored from the melting. And I have a feeling that the reason why the display here is a little bit darker on the left hand side is because of that uh, black discoloration in the white lens. Nevertheless, it's a heck of a lot better than it was when we started and it certainly looks like a lot better working display that can be used on the radio. Here's some of the costs that were involved in the repair. The parts were uh, $15.75 from Bainesville Electronics. That includes the six bulbs. Two of them were used in repair and actually that should be uh, four of them are kept as spares and then the solder wick and it took about 55 miles round trip to get the parts and return and I'm not sure exactly how many hours it took to repair it took an hour or so to actually do the prep work uh, that is figuring out the bulbs and what size of bulbs that were needed and do the research and that sort of stuff and then it took uh, about an hour, a couple hours or so to go down and get the parts and that sort of thing and it only took about a couple of hours to actually do the repair itself. It didn't take very long. And probably the most difficult part of the repair was actually reassembling the control module. And it wasn't really that hard, but uh, getting the circuit board into the front module uh, it took a little bit of juggling because the white plastic piece was on the on the circuit board and the two uh, buttons were in the plastic front piece along with the yellow lens and everything was loose so it took a couple tries to get those two pieces to co combine together and once that was done everything just went together real nicely this is a listing of the various tools that were used in the repair process the needle nose pliers a set of wire cutters Phillips screwdriver standard screwdriver, Kessler solder, and I'm sure that Kessler solder was older than the actual radio itself, wet paper towel, an extension cord, a Weller soldering iron, a 25 watt soldering iron, and I know that's definitely older than the radio, and solder wick. If you have any further questions about this repair, check us out at King's Rule Production, Words and Images by Don, the web address is here on the display. I'll also leave it in the notes or in the description below. You can leave comments here in the video or leave comments on the web page. There may be more information over on the web page that might help you out and answer questions. And you can also leave me comments over on the web page if you need to. I do want to give some thanks to Bainesville Electronics, Google, and the wonderful team here at King's Rule Production for helping to make this presentation possible. I think now I'm going to go play around with the radio and do some operation. See how it goes. Have a good day.